Hello and welcome to the TT Podcast. This is episode two of the Ryan Kringle Podcast. If you've not listened to episode one, stop right now, head back, listen to it, watch it wherever you consume your podcasts. I think, Steve, you were about to butt in, as you always do, with a, with a question. So, on you go. Obviously, you've had two events now, TT23 and Manx23. Where's the toughest section for you? That is a hard question. And don't tell me in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. It's the, the, the hardest bits I find is the big bike with my neck. Because I, as um, people call me a cat, I, I was probably more than me a cat and I was out <laughs> the screen. Up. I don't like being Giraffe behind the bubble and not being able don't to you? see everything's going on. So if you see <coughs> photos of me, my You're head's... You're not comfy, yeah? No, my head's con- constantly out of screen and like... You Remember thought about entering on a Honda Goldwing or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try something a bit different. Put the radio <laughs> on. Yes. You got it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe get a pillion. <laughs> get your brother on the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I just remember coming down to Balcrane and stuff and, and, and the Solby straight and again into <laughs> Balaf. Um, the, the force of the neck and the helmet pushing back, I, I couldn't breathe properly. And I remember hit, as soon as I hit the brakes, I just have to take massive gasps of breath and prepare myself for the next section and go... As soon as you landed off laps, like right, I've got to go to the end of Solby now, and then I'll be okay again until I get to Ramsey. So it's just, it is mad. You just teach yourself how to do it, don't you? You know, prepare yourself for each section at a time. It's the same sort of thing for me working with Chris Pritchard. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, big deep breaths. What big shoulders? Because you have to carry me. Yeah, exactly. Carry me through everything. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people don't realise that when, especially when you see onboard camera uh, on any race in MotoGP, Superbike, TT, no, you don't realise how much force is. When you get out of the bubble and you're braking, how much force is actually is actually on you? I've mm. not really experienced it probably to the same degree a lot of people have, but it is it is a stress and it is something you've got to kind of work against, isn't it? There's, there isn't, like I said, I've never w- had myself wedged in a seat with something behind me to stop yeah. me moving because I normally, nine times out of ten, if something's there or thereabouts, I'm a person that won't touch anything, I'll just leave it and ride around that problem. And mm. I just couldn't, I was just sliding in the seat, my neck was getting ripped off my shoulders, mm. like... There's no way of preparing for this, though. It's just the only way of doing it is building up throughout the port, not your neck muscles, isn't it? It's you uh, you went off to... You did a bit of Superstock, uh, British Championship. Yep. You know, um, last... In, in 23, sorry. So on the build-up to 24 for the TT, obviously it's a massive expense already, racing a TT, you know, racing anywhere to a certain degree. But, you know, is the plan to, to go and do some more British stuff pre, pre-TT pre to get some mileage up and get your bike fitness going? I would like to. Um but unfortunately, I think what I went on last year, I'm still trying to wiggle my way out of that and get this year sorted as well. Um, my main my main priority is TT, and I know I've worked everything out of fuel and tyres and engines, expenses and stuff. So fortunately, I have picked up a ride for 600 this year, so my expenses sure. for that's quite quite little. So um, I've just got to try and box off this big bike stuff, and once that money's there, I'm just in the middle of the try to sort this out at the minute, and if I can get that money to one side, and anything that comes available then, I'll do. But... I carry an injury I've had for 10 years now, which I really struggle on short circuits with. Um, don't struggle with the TT, cause it, but it's w- when you're under load on the brake, um, I've, d- I've done something to my shoulder and did, did, no one can seem to get to the bottom of it. I've been to numerous people. So we went to um, Thruxton and we were running the pack from 20th to 11th we were and everything was going good. And then after half race distance, yeah, you know, you come, you come out the complex and you got the fast right, left. I yeah. just couldn't steer the bike anymore at the speed I need to keep going so I had to throttle off and it's annoying because I know I can be with them guys and do that but I, I physically couldn't but I've done a lot I've never trained this this winter I am training um never know. never trained no it's just not my thing you know yeah. just it, just I, use the bike as fitness yeah I, just, I do a lot of motocross and that's yeah. my in, in my head that was my fitness um so it's weird because obviously motocross is massive on legs and shoulders. It is, yeah. Uh, and you seem to be, and you seem to be struggling. It's really weird. Yeah, yeah. it's a weird one. Motocross, I don't feel it. It's a TT. I didn't feel it once. Absolutely fine. It was a, wor- it was a worry before I started, mm. but um, it didn't hamper me at all. So that was good. It's, I don't know. The sections you're talking about, you know, uh, when you had the problems at the <coughs> TT, as well as uh, those parts of Thruxton, you know, it's all counter steering. It is. Which is where the crank's spinning really hard, the inertia yeah. of the bike is pushing it forward, and it doesn't want to lean either way. Yeah. So you're trying to muscle it. That's, you know, for the people listening, that's the toughest part of riding the bike and probably one of the toughest parts of the TT course. Yeah, I think basically a short circuit. I think the aggro is caused from the load on the brake, it, that mm. sets it off and then it flares up. But, you know, just. 
uh, I'm never going anywhere with that anyway. So I haven't got the money to do what yeah. like what them boys do, and I know what it takes. It's like thrucks and what thrucks and cost me out of my own pocket. It's ridiculous, and I, I just love it. So I just thought I was like, going to have another crack, and if I can go back again this year, it's, it's a good track. I love it. It's fast, isn't it? So it's a good place to go. It's certainly fast. So um, give us an idea then. You just said there you were you were kind of allocating your money for your tyres, for your fuel, and, and getting yourself sorted expense-wise. Fuel always interests me. How much fuel do you go through? Because you never, again, as someone that just watches it, you just put, you know, the bikes just go round and round. You don't really appreciate how much fuel goes into a bike on, the, on a daily basis. How much money do you allocate for fuel? Yeah, so this year I've um, worked it out. The the bike I'm riding, 600, it's to be run on race fuel. And last year I didn't use race fuel purely down to running costs. I've honestly never had a problem with pump fuel even. I have my own dyno. I have back-to-back fuel and the difference in gain, it's not worth the money. But So this year, lucky enough, I, I have. Um, I think I've sorted someone to pay for my fuel this year, which is a good bonus. But I think it's like 30... Just shy of 30 lap, five laps on a big bike, we'll get it. Practice goes well in the races, yep. and it's round 25 and 600. And for the race fuel, it's going to be roughly between three and three and a half grand for them laps. Oh, that's some coin, isn't it? On a positive note, it's almost as much you know, as at least you're riding somebody else's 600 so you can break that instead of your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been, I've been fortunate with that, so I hope that all goes well. He's got two good engines out there and yeah. the deal is I put some tyres and fuel and what is it what sim sport machine are you an R6 riding? perfect yeah. yeah so it's proper yeah. raffle engines and stuff so yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a proper little thing yeah. so where's race fuel coming from as well how do you get how do you get your hands on that and what's the difference between that and pump fuel just the the um, the octane that's that's in it yeah I think so it's more more octane isn't there it's, it's a cleaner bang in the engine it's definitely better for your engine and stuff but yeah. Like, like I said, I've, I've never had problems with pump fuel. People mm. do have problems because the, the tanks and stuff has come from, but I haven't had one. And last year, none of my problems were due to fuel. So £1.50 a litre to £4.50. So it, it's, uh, and part of it is it's less of a risk for anything to go wrong. Exactly, yeah. You're just getting clean fuel. Yeah. 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 So if you can afford it, definitely use it, yeah. But yeah, but where'd you pick it up from? Like, do you go and buy it by the barrel? Do you buy it by... Like, you can't just go to a pump, can you, and go and get it from no, someone? No, you can't buy it from people. You buy it by, you know... Well, basically in a twenty litre barrel and, and it right. was delivered to the Isle of Man. Right, yeah. got you. And is yeah. there one is there one type of race fuel? Is there like a manufacturer that just makes one type of race fuel? I, I might sound stupid saying this, but I have no idea. It's not like Shell, is it? It's not like Texaco or Asda. No, there, there, is, there are various companies that do supply race fuel to various championships. You know, British Superbike uses a one mate fuel for right. all classes. So there are companies around, some are based in Ireland, some are based in the UK, that, that supply race fuel for anybody that needs it. And it's pretty much, you know, um, some championships use it to, to keep it very level. Right. Um, so there's no cheating, because you can cheat on, on fuel in, in, in particular classes. But pretty much, uh, there are various companies around the around, especially around Europe, that supply um, specific fuels for specific bikes. All oh, right. And what what price is it? Would, would it be a litre? What would it say on the big sign if you if if they say uh, twenty this... twenty? Oh, I look after the F one hundred Cup at British <coughs> Championship, and that's compuls. Uh, that's uh, the same fuel for each bike, um, supplied by one company. And I think last season was roughly seventy pounds for a twenty litre drum. What does that? What's that? I don't know what that. Work equates it out. To you went to school, didn't you? Well, no, no, I probably didn't. didn't no. I mean, I went to school. I didn't listen. But what's that? Like two pound a litre or something like that? Yeah, it's not massively expensive because it can save a lot of problems as well. I suppose so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And anyway. it keeps it even. But in on the Sorry. case of riding the TT course, going back to Ryan or or anybody that's competing at the TT, it's one less thing to go wrong because you can get contamination. Yeah. Uh, in you know, quite an awful lot of pump fuels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a race bike. Yeah, mm. it's yeah. Three grand just, just for fuel, and then tie, uh, and then you've just got. What's tire budget? And in just on that, because it's interesting, I think, for the listener. I think it's between five and six for the tire budget for both bikes this year, and that's something I'm working on trying to get some help, yeah, yeah. help so behind that. Three front tires and three rears <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah, near enough. It's, it's five hundred quid a set now. It's you know probably yeah. when you're racing that you could. You, and I remember when we raced earlier in the days, you could pick a set of tires with like two hundred and forty quid. And yeah. We're just getting priced out the market at the minute. It's I don't know what where this is going to go because we can't get like I can't afford to keep doing this all the time. There's no way. Is you know you still got to put the tea on the table at home, haven't you? And and do you yeah. so with the tire budget, you obviously allocate a set amount of tires. But if you come in and you look at it and you go, ah, oh, that could pro- I could probably get another lap out of that. Would you? Or based on like safety and what you've 
you've kind of budgeted, you just go screw it, just stick a new tire in anyway. Yeah, I I work on safety more than anything. Yeah. You know, if you if you can't afford to be there, you shouldn't be there in a sense. Mm. You know, you can't go scraping eight laps out of a tire when it should only do four in my head. Um, I try and get a set of tires per night, and yeah, in that way you are you're in the safe line. Yeah, you end up with very good scrubs at the end of it to go and burn off at track day somewhere, so it's mm. good. Does that mean there's a lot of cheap tyres going for, for sale? At, um... Oh, he's got some track days <laughs> booked. That's what he's trying to sniff. I, I, I know that, exactly. Yeah. He's going to Jerez. I know exactly what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till I come back and I'm the I'm the chief biker here. I'll have done more racing than you this year. Yeah. They'll be looking okay. at me with, with respect. You know how he once. talks. They call it track <laughs> That's what he'll be talking when he gets back from Jerez. Oh, so fast, I got my knee down and everything. <laughs> Um, so what? Sorry, sorry, sorry to no, no, jump no, no, in, Chris. Uh, what sorry, are your expectations for twenty four then? Obviously, you're riding my question. more. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah, but you're you're obviously riding more classes. You've got the Manx under your belt, a bit of mileage and stuff. What what's your expectations really? Or what? Sorry, what would uh, you be happy with? It's you know obviously again it's hard to say weather and wise and all that. We get the time we need, but if we have a good run through practice and. Now I've left senior race day with a bike that I know is relatively set up. If I can jump straight into the first night of practice and get back to the speed where I was and I can build on that, I'll be happy. You know, I'm not, not looking to make a big jump and I'm definitely not. And if I'm, you know, 20th and senior, if I'm, if I'm around them kind of results in the top 20 again, I'd be happy with that. You know, people say other things, but it's all about being safe, coming back, enjoying it. And if you're in the top 20 at the CT, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy with that for the second year. You know, maybe done. I'd maybe done more than what I thought I would have done last year. So it's maybe upset this year a bit for me because obviously I do want to go faster. Yeah, but I'll never sit and say everyone's got a figure in their head, haven't they? But they'll never sit here and tell you it because go on, tell us. <laughs> <100%. laughs> the answer to that question is just to improve. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So if I can go, if I go ten seconds faster, five seconds faster, if I'm better, I'm better, aren't I? What's life like on the Isle of Man when we're not racing? So this time of year, so we're we're in February now, heading to March. What what's going on in in Ryan's world? Is every day some form of prep to the TT, or you just got your head down in your work? Because obviously you you're not a professional. You are working full time as well. So no, it says yeah. It's just we're just working away in the background, trying to get some funds together to do the job. Um, I'm doing a bit of training for the first time, so. I'm training most days of the week. Try to get a session midweek on the motocross bike in as well as at the weekend because I think that's really good for mm. you. Um, other than that, it's as quiet as you can imagine. There's nothing, nothing going on over there. It's a quiet island. You've uh, two weeks. We're actually in Manchester here in the studio. You've flown over. You said you've been down to the Supercross in London watching. Arena, You're not sniffing Arena, a re- cross. Arena Cross. Sorry. You're not sniffing a return, are you? On to Nobles and and having a dabble at that as well. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know if I could last year to get an entry, but they were in between two different really? rounds, so they didn't pick me didn't pick me here up till too late. So um I'd love a go. I would um I won't cross my first love and it still is. I, I love it. I always go back to it all the time. It's something you can aff- my tires by my bike have been on there for the last five, six rides now. You, it's just it's not cheap, but it's way cheaper than doing what we do here. Ball, so yeah. so um you know, if, if someone got me an entry for next year to go and do a round, I'd, I'd be at it. Would you be competitive? Do you think? Like, I don't, I don't quite know what the I level is. That's horrible questions sometimes, isn't it? No, of course he ask... would. <laughs> but they, don't forget, these boys are on it day, day in, day out. You're on it not as much. So, but could you just rock up there and be competitive? No. So they got a, like a amateur class, if you want to call it that, for right. people like to me who work each time, and yeah, then yeah. you got the pros as well. So you definitely wouldn't be jumping into the pro class. Right. But I just. Something I just want to tick the box there. It's something I've always, something I wish I would have got into as a kid. Honestly, it's, it's it looks so fun. I I love jumping bikes and the technical side and the time inside. It's all I like. That's the way I work on a yeah. motorcycle bike. I really enjoy that kind of thing. So you're not right. You're not normal. <laughs> you're not, is it? They, don't, they don't. They don't make. Well, I, I'm I'm going to be contradicted here because <laughs> yeah. they do make wings for bikes now, but they're supposed to be. That's to keep the wheels on the floor, not flipping take off. <laughs> nah, it's. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I really do. It's, it's something that if I get a chance to, I've said it to somebody before this, if I get a chance to take that box next year, we'll, we'll be going. Who's the um, who's the GOAT then, in your opinion, when it comes to Supercross? Oh, Bubba. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he's, he used to do things back in the yeah, day. Yeah, Remember the Daytona when he, the wall jump, he used to mm-hmm. pre-jump it and jump over the top of it. Just the stuff he used to do was ridiculous. And when he wanted to turn it on, no one would see which way you went. 
Jet Lawrence is ridiculous. <laughs> is, is he going to be the next Bubba? The next he Carmichael? Already, I think he already is, isn't he? There's a few watching Saturday nights again. He, he had it in the bag again. and He yeah. s- seems to make a few mistakes and cost himself the win, but he's young. He's Was he 18, 19? Yeah, and you, s- you sit and watch the things he actually does on a bike, the way he absorbs bumps instead of taking it through his body and that. He, he's just so... Yeah, he's proper on his A game. Yeah, it seems like you get you get those people who you get the type of rider that comes and follows what everyone else is doing, but then you get those like probably Carmichael, James Stewart, and L- Jet Lawrence, who just rip the rule book up and just ride their own way, and then people start to emulate them, don't they? And the way they ride, they ride completely different. Yeah, it's definitely, and that's something I'd love to go out and watch one day. You know, it's one of them. It's just such a such well, a good event. Obviously, you said you, you love doing the jumps and, and, and so on, but <laughs> what about these lunatics that I can't, I'm, I'm not as gend up, but that, that jump off the high rise buildings at, uh, uh, you know, what? in the States and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, don't think I'm up for that. <laughs> no. uh, oh, you mean with parachutes? <laughs> no, no. On a, no. Mo- on a motorbike? Yeah. Who? Robbie Madison. Madison. Oh, he jumped I've spent some yeah. time with Robbie. Yeah, yeah he's. In, uh, he's, mate, he's not. He's a, he's a lovely, lovely lad at Western Beach Race. Yeah. He's a lovely, lovely lad, but he's not right. It's something that we've done West, and that's that's a hard slog. That three yeah. hours. Have you? Bike. Yeah, that's a I've commentated Western uh, a few times, and I went twenty three uh, just as a punter, looking around and, and watching because I've never actually been out and watched yeah. everywhere. Uh, incredible place, and mate, listen, you said you don't train. You must you must be half fit to do flipping Western. Oh, I bet. The, uh, it's that I've been three times. I think the first time I blew the guts out of the bike at the end of the street after a couple of hours. Well, you, obviously, listening to this podcast, you're very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's his biggest, strongest just, talent. <laughs> if you're on a bike wreck, give me a call. <laughs> we, we can sort it out. Unfortunately, I am a bike wrecker. I am. Um, I don't know why, but I just <laughs> seem to just seem to put them to the test. And yeah, so Western definitely a good experience. It's something I want to do again. It's but it's something. Um, last time I finished, I, I think I was forty, high forties last year. But we, I snapped too quickly even purchase. I was in the fifth stage as well. So, we're having a good ride until then. Um, it's it's just something I finish. Take my helmet off. Go, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> it's, For a week. It, it's, yeah, yeah. Until I get up the M6 to order to tap boat home. I'm like, <laughs> we're fucking, we're fucking exactly, yeah. in this. It's hard. It is very, very hard on the body. But it's we we ride sand. That's all we ride at home. We've got mm. real good sand tracks. And that sand. For me, Western Beach Race is the same kind of outlook as the Isle of Man TT. It's the pinnacle of dirt bikes. Really, it's the it's the toughest part of dirt bikes to a certain degree. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. I remember a few years ago I got set off right right at the front basically, and the, same as the TT, you're always learning. Like it, we came into a dune, and the the organisers, the dune was obviously a very tall dune, but very very sneakily they put a roller before it to go up the dune. But me mm-hmm. not thinking about it, I came into this roller, seeing it as a jump to jump up the dune. I jumped, and as soon as I landed in the face of the dune, the bike just sunk and. <laughs> I just had to jump off, rip it round, come back down, come back up again. And that was my lesson learned. You know, it's just little things. Wait, I thought Le 2K was like the the big one of the beach races. No, it's big, you know. It's not as big as Western. Um, no, it is, of course it's big, but it's obviously, it's, I meant really in the UK. All oh, right, but, okay. um But obviously, West, uh, sorry, Le 2K is massive, um, but you get your sand specialist because the main man's just won that this this uh, this year, hasn't he? The sand man. Yeah, oh, what's his name? He's won Western six oh, times now. Todd. Uh, Todd Kellett. Yeah. All right. Todd Kellett. Yeah, well done, mate. Yeah, yeah Todd Kellett is flipping neck. He's something special. He's, he is ridiculous in the sand. He's, yeah. he's been over to Ireland a few times training as well. Has he? I think they call him a sand rat. Yeah. <laughs> he's just... Yeah, fair play. He is, he's, he's not built for it either. Isn't like he's a very small person. And you, yeah. when you don't have the legs, like I've tried doing the odd and duo here and then. Got me a little stumpy legs, and I can't put my foot down to, <laughs> to to get myself up the next bit. You know, I end up spinning up, going on the ground, getting and you know, getting angry and stuff. So I just, it's not for me and you. And he's the same. You know, you need your legs, and that and yeah. he hasn't got them. So to yeah. do what he does is special. What makes a good sand rider then? And what what is so difficult about riding on sand? Just the softness of it. The softness. Of it. So the the hardest thing to get in someone's head is the faster you go, the easier it is. Because Right. As soon as you chop the throttle, the, f- the front wheel will just Digging dig in. into sand and f- put you out the front door. So, but trying to register that with people, you need to go quick to go make it yeah. easy for yeah. you. It's, you know, it's, it's a confidence thing all over again, isn't it? Yeah. So, finishing off with our motocross chat, greatest of all time. You're still saying Bubba across all categories of motocross. Uh, what about Niter? 
I, technically Who? it's Enduro. <laughs> Enduro, but... I, I don't know. A guy, a guy called David Knight. Have you heard of him? Have you heard of him, Ryan? Yeah. A few times. He's done a bit. Yeah. I've heard of June Knight, but not <laughs> David Knight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. June Knight's garage is the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would we say? Well, Jeremy McGrath or not? Jeremy, I don't have much memory because I was young when he was in oh, his yeah. prime. Not yeah, he's, hero, yeah he's not my year. Um, Stefan Evert was going out of my era as I, as I was getting to know Evan, he was still about, but he was sort of fading out as yeah. I was getting to remember all this stuff. But obviously, he was another goer. Yeah, Jeff Erlins. Yeah, yeah, he just he just won Hawkstone yesterday, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Dutchie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is ridiculous. On unbelievable. Yeah, I um I once held a door open for Stefan Everts. Did you? Yeah, at Mete. <laughs> what do you think to that? Yeah. Well. <laughs> We can all claim fame somehow, I suppose. What's your biggest claim to fame apart from sitting next to me? Um, <laughs> I can't claim anything really. I, don't I mean, your little your little story about your skiing holiday—that was there was <laughs> na- names getting dropped left, right, and centre there, weren't there? <laughs> Old names. But yeah, but Scottish it, mafia. Yeah. Jim Moody. Name them. Jim Moody, Ian Simpson, Brian Morrison, Wolsey Coulter. Absolute legends yeah. of the sport. What a skiing trip. Mm. Did you actually see any snow, though? Or? Good snow. Really good snow. It was actually colder at home. It was that real bad spot anyway. Mm. It was good. No, it was brilliant. Good catch-up with the guys. and uh, Everybody's still the same. Same flipping crackers and competitive. and Yeah. You never lose Morrison it, won. He had the most crashes. <laughs> 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 right. One thing that people have been waiting for, because you haven't been on the podcast for a while... And I tried to pick up the gauntlet, but I just couldn't. I couldn't do it justice. Steve play as quick fire questions. Yeah, come on. Sock right, just us. just a few, just ten quick fire questions. Answer one or the other. Yeah. Okay. Don't need any explanations or anything. Beer or spirits? Spirits. Two stroke or four stroke? Two stroke. Mm-hmm. Motor crossing, you see. Blonde or brunette? Blonde. Nobles or slicks? Uh, slicks. <laughs> Pineapple or never pineapple on a pizza? Never pineapple. Boo, get out. Get out. <laughs> There's a door. Uh, modern or classic superbikes? Modern. Good lad. Crosby jump or Balakrai jump? Both fast. Crosby. Top 10 British superstock or top 10 at the TT? Top 10 TT. I knew you'd say that. Grandstand to Balacrane or Ginger Hall to Ramsey? Ginger Hall to Ramsey. Not a crosser. Flipping neck. Connor Cummins or David Knight? <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry, Knight. He's helped me, so. Yeah, got it. Hey, thanks, mate. Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, safe trip back to the island, and we'll uh, we'll see you. And good luck in a couple mm-hmm. of months. Twenty-four, yeah. mate. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. Come Thank on, you. Mate. Ryan has left the building, so now we can say whatever we want about him. Be kind. No, hey, he's, listen. He's broader than you. Yeah, it, much broader than me, yeah. Um, he could probably knock me out with one punch. <laughs> but what a lovely lad. Hey, great. You know, I didn't realise what a tough time he had as a newcomer last year. Yeah, I did a I did a feature with him on the daily roundups of the TT. And th- they were busy working then. And and he was, I think we're only halfway through the TT. And, and he, you could see that he was stressed. You could see there was a lot going on. And he was, I mean, you if if the TT happens every other week, he probably would have packed up and gone home. But it's it's once a year for two weeks, so you have to beg, steal, and borrow. And like he said in the chat, he just went out and bought a bike. Probably put himself into I'm not going to say huge debt, but you know, don't make it easy for himself. He made it pretty clear he's still paying that debt off. You know, it's a massive task, not just obviously physically, but financially. You know, and it's quite a a great insight, especially for the listeners, of what it actually costs the privateers to go and race the Alaman TT. It makes you think, is it almost worth it? Of course. But that's it. You know, you put all that money and effort in for 50 weeks of the year to then just for those two weeks, just to rip around the island. And while he's got his helmet on and he's under that bubble, it's all worth it then, isn't it? Hey, of course it is. And it's times two. There's two brothers that are having to go as well. So what else did you pick up from the uh, from the chat with Ryan then? Obviously Connor's an ally, Connor Cummins, you know, a nearly man, very, very nearly. Mm-hmm. You know, Connor's been 
so fast for so many years, he stood on the podium with me when I won, you know, and, and still up there on the pace. So uh, it was a big part of his life. And of course, I asked him between, I thought he was going to say nine to in the, uh, the quick, quick, fire quick fire questions. Yeah. But yeah, I suppose he didn't want to upset Connor. Well, he'll be, do you know what? If he carries on the way he's going, there's a good chance he might be upsetting Connor and, and taking a victory as, a, as the first Manxman in a long time. Imagine that. Don't you put Connor down like that. There's still Listen, life left in him yet. I love Connor, and I think he has got a win in him. Regardless of what other people say, he's got a win in him. He might need a little bit of luck to do it, but... It would make my TT24 if Connor won. Do you know what? I think it'd make everybody's, even the people he beats, I think they they doff their caps and, and say, chapeau, Connor, you deserve that. But here's a just quick question before we go. If Connor won this year, let's say he did, do you think he'd, that'd be it? Do you think he'd go, do you know what, I've had, I've had it now, I'm, I'm done? Yeah, I think it would be, actually. So the only reason he's kind of still racing is to get that, that victory? or No, I wouldn't say the only Connor loves it. He's yeah. so passionate about the TT. You know, he's a great ambassador for the event. Obviously, he's a local. But I think, realistically, uh, if he was to win, then it would put resor his resources into other things and probably take a step back. Yeah, he's a businessman, isn't he? Certainly is. Well, that's it for this episode of the TT Podcast. If you're watching on TT Plus, we appreciate it. But what I'd really, really appreciate if you could just take a moment to head over to iTunes or Spotify or anywhere else you can hear this podcast. Leave us a little rating and a review because it makes a massive difference, especially to Steve's ego. Anyway, me and Steve are here next week and our next guest is Sean Anderson. And here is a little teaser of that episode. You have to understand, right, I'm a complete... TT fanatic. There isn't a, <coughs> an, a YouTube clip for three seconds of somebody going flat out through the bottom of a gallery that I don't watch. <laughs> oh, there's a, a new podcast this week. Oh, there's a, a Between the Hedges. There's a such and such. There's a document. There's a documentary in German about such like Trumer or somebody like that there. Right, I watch that with subtitles. There's, there isn't anything <laughs> ah! that goes on Mega. that I don't try to keep my hand in. Now, the first place you can see that episode is right here on TT Plus a week earlier than anywhere else unless you're watching on YouTube right now. And if you are, leave us a comment down below. And as always, for all the latest news and features, head over to iomttracers.com and across on the socials, we are, Steve, at TT Racers Official. See you later, Steve.